the Redmi K20. It's one of the best phones you can buy for around 20,000 rupees today. So that's it. End of review, right? Well, not quite. While it might be the best phone in its price bracket, arguably, it is not a perfect device. It's got its own set of pros and cons. And in today's review, let's take a look at what works for the K20, what holds it back, and everything else about this phone. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech. And if you do end up liking what you're seeing here, drop us a like, get subscribed, and please turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Okay, so design. Now the built-in design here, it's pretty much identical to what we've seen with the Redmi K20 Pro. I'm happy that Redmi did not skimp out on anything for the lower priced model. We still get the same Gorilla Glass 5 protected glass sandwich built, and even the water resistant P2Y nano coating is present and accounted for. In our time with the K20, it felt very premium in hand with the curved glass to the back and the glazier blue variant, you know, it kind of turned a lot of heads. Now it's unique, it's got that auto prime design. I really like uh, the looks here. Of course, while the build looks good, it does come with the regular caveats for a glass build. It's slippery, it picks up fingerprints, so we use the K20 for the entire time with the included case. Now moving on to the front of the device, we've got the same 6.39 inch Full HD Plus AMOLED panel as we've seen on the K20 Pro. There is no notch or punch hole here to distract us from whatever it is that we're seeing on screen. The entire front of the phone is dominated by this full screen display. And thanks to the sharp contrast, vivid colors and inky black amoled goodness, the K20 offers an amazingly immersive media viewing experience. Even the sound quality from the downwards firing single speaker, it's quite loud, but be careful while holding it in landscape mode, its positioning kind of makes it pretty easy to cover up. It is worth mentioning that there is no stereo speaker setup here, but the headphone jack is present and accounted for and it supports hi-fi audio. The output is really good. Coming back to the display for a moment, I just want to point out that there is Widevine L1 certification on the Indian model, so Netflix and other streaming services, they can run in HD resolutions. And there's even support for HDR content. On top of all this, the K20 can get pretty bright outdoors with a peak brightness of 600 nits. So far, we've discussed the similarities between the K20 and K20 Pro, right? Let's now look at the differences. Now, the K20 is priced lower than the K20 Pro. So it does come with a less powerful chip, the Snapdragon 730. That said, it is still one of the best mid-range chipsets out there. And when it can't compete with the 855 in terms of benchmark scores, with day-to-day -day usage, we felt the K20 being just as snappy as the K20 Pro. Now, my colleague who did the majority of testing for this device never once felt that this was a mid-ranger. He never felt like he was using a mid-range phone. The entire user interface was buttery smooth and even something like, say, split-screen multitasking, it was handled without any hiccups. That's, of course, thanks in part to the 6 gigs of RAM on board. Now, speaking of memory, the K20 comes in two variants. It's got either 64 gigs of storage or 128 gigs of storage, UFS 2.1. Now, this is pretty important since there is no room for memory expansion via microSD. Now, as for gaming, we have the Adreno 618 GPU here and it does really well even with demanding titles like PUBG. We never faced any drop frames on the touch, it remained responsive throughout. Now, if you've read about any jitter issues, do not worry about it at all. It's been blown way out of proportion. It is pretty much a non-issue. It's there on every AMOLED display touring phone. It is not going to interfere with your gaming experience. And talking about gaming experience, you can pretty much game for a long time on this because it's got a massive 4000 mAh battery inside. Despite packing such a big battery, the K20 is in thick. And thanks to the curved back, it fits snugly in the palm of your hand. The 191 gram weight is distributed pretty evenly across the device too. So you don't really feel that weight even if you're using the phone one-handed. Now coming back to the battery, we managed to end most days with around 35 to 40% left in the tank. Which means that even if you are a heavy user, the K20 should have no problems lasting a single day on a full charge. Talking about charge, Redmi have included an 18 watt fast charger in the box, which is great because that's the fastest charging speed the K20 supports. The K20 can charge up quite fast if you need a quick top up. Now, in case if you're wondering, the K20 Pro can support up to 27 watts, but it still comes with an 18 watt charger in the box, just like the K20. 
Now, one of the reasons why the battery life here is excellent is because of MIUI. MIUI 10 built on top of Android 9 Pie is what is running on this phone and it's power efficient as always and it's paired with a 8 nanometer Snapdragon 730 nonetheless. Now MIUI here, you know, it comes with the same things that we expect of it but what surprised me was the fact that the K20, just like the K20 Pro, comes with the POCO launcher by default. This means swapping up gives you access to an app drawer and you can also hide your app icons. Redmi has taken full advantage of the AMOLED screen too. There's a system-wide dark mode option that's available and that looks absolutely awesome. And you can also let the screen be always on since it's AMOLED. And finally, there's a game mode. Well, that's not exclusive to the K20, but what is unique here is the software enhancements we have for games like PUBG. You can choose spam rejection zones and even enhance the display contrast to spot enemies better among foliage. So, lots of great features on this version of MIUI and apparently no display ads as well. We all know how I feel about ads in MIUI, so this time I'm gonna leave it up to you guys. Have you seen any ads on your K20 or K20 Pro? If so, drop me a screenshot on Twitter at c 4 etech So, the sundries then, uh, we have an in-display fingerprint scanner, again thanks to that AMOLED panel. It works quite well. Face unlock is also present, but the selfie camera takes a bit of time to go up and down. So, you know, we resorted to using the fingerprint scanner more. Having said that, the selfie camera has two light strips along the sides and makes a cool sound effect uh, when sliding up and down. It's unique and I really liked it. But if you don't like it, Redmi does give you an option to turn it off. Also, you have a notification LED. This kind of doubles as that on the top of the selfie camera module. It's a weird position, sure, but I'm glad Redmi is at least giving people the option. We also have the usual suspects like FM radio and Redmi's even thrown in that P2Y water repellent coating. Now, two omissions here that are really disappointing. One, microSD support despite this being a Redmi phone. And two, NFC which has weirdly been omitted only for the Indian variant. I don't know what they were thinking. Now let's move on to optics. Well, the primary here is a 48 megapixel camera with an f1.75 lens. Now this here is the Sony IMX582 sensor. It's pretty much the same as the IMX586 that we've been seeing on other flagships, but this one doesn't have support for 4K 60fps video, so it's not a big difference. The K20 also loses out on a laser assist for autofocus, but that doesn't seem to make any noticeable change. Now, taking a look at the daylight images, they are pretty much what we've come to expect. Sharp looking photos with good dynamic range, a little saturated in the color department, but overall, really nice looking pictures. We also have a 48 megapixel option here and it does increase the detail levels a bit. Now, moving on to wide angle, that's the secondary camera. This is a 13 megapixel sensor with a 125 degree field of view. The most budget-oriented wide-angle cameras suffer from a lack of dynamic range, but Redmi has done really well in that aspect here. The K20 gets decent detail levels and good colors even with the wide-angle shots. Speaking of detail levels, we have an 8-megapixel telephoto camera here with a f2.4 lens. This basically gives you 2x optical zoom with the K20. Now, there has been a rumor going around, you know, saying this telephoto camera is fake, uh, but that is basically because under low-light conditions, the telephoto camera doesn't get triggered. The K20 automatically switches to the main 48 megapixel shooter as, as it's got a much wider f1.75 aperture and it crops in uh, so that it can get a lot more light in the image. Now, this is not just a Redmi thing. Most phones, most phones with dual camera with uh, telephoto implementations, including your flagship iPhones, your Galaxy flagships, they all do the same. Uh, it's just like uh, those implementations under bright light the telephoto camera kicks in here too. As you can see with these pictures, they're all 8 megapixel f2.4, which is that telephoto camera. While taking portrait mode shots, the K20 gives us an option of taking a photo either with the primary camera or a zoomed in shot with the telephoto sensor. The detail levels are all right, and so is the edge deduction. Nothing to complain about. Coming to selfies, the 20 megapixel pop-up camera does a decent job, good details, but the skin tones are a bit on the lighter side even with beauty mode off, and it does tend to overexpose the highlights in the background a bit. The edge reduction though is on point. Now, talking about the low light shots, the primary sensor here does fairly well. The 4x1 pixel binning means we have an effect of 1.6 micron sized pixels here, which combined with the wide f1.75 aperture makes for some pretty good looking nighttime pictures. Xiaomi has also thrown in a dedicated night mode, 
that improves the low light image quite drastically. We now have much brighter images with less noise and more detail. Sadly, the other two lenses, they do not get support for night mode. What they do get though is the ability to capture video. This isn't something that most phones allow. So it is a positive here for the K20. As far as video, video through the primary camera goes, the maximum resolution is 4K30. The resulting footage has pretty good detail levels, decent colors and dynamic range. We also have EIS on board. Another interesting thing here is the inclusion of a 960 FPS super slow-mo option on the K20. Uh, technically, the Snapdragon 730 cannot capture footage beyond 240 FPS. So I assume there's some software-based uh, uh, frame interpolation going on here, just like with uh, Realme. Overall, we have some really awesome cameras here on the K20 and I'm quite impressed with what Redmi has been able to achieve here. With all that said, let's now wrap this review up with the pricing. The Redmi K20 starts at 22,000 rupees for the 664 variant and goes up to 24,000 rupees for the 6128. For this price, Redmi has put together an excellent phone. And if compared to the F1, it doesn't seem to have the same price to performance ratio, but that doesn't make this a bad offering. The only reason why the K20 feels overpriced is because the K20 Pro with a flagship chip with that Snapdragon 855 is priced at 28K, just 4K over the 6128K20. So it feels like a better option. If you're gonna go for the K20, you might as well go for the K20 Pro. I mean, that's the feel you get, which is why the K20 looks overpriced. But if you don't want that flagship chip, instead you wanna save some money, but want an excellent looking smartphone that delivers all around pretty much, then the K20 does seem to be a good option. I do wish it was priced the same as it is in China, that is 20,000 rupees, but even at 22, it still feels solid, despite the lack of NFC, micro SD, stereo speakers and all that. Anyway, this is my opinion of the K20. Now tell me yours, what do you feel about the Redmi K20? Would you buy one at 22K or would you buy something else? You know, either jump up to the K20 Pro or go down to the Poco F1 or the Realme X. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and you know the rest. Thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever you feel. Subscribe, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech. And I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.